We all agree bullying is a major problem, but our attempts to stop it actually leading to censorship of conservative beliefs. A fair and balanced debate right after the break. The online bullying episode in Florida that ended with one girl committing suicide and two others charged with aggravated stalking is drawing nationwide attention. Cases like these make anti-bullying programs seem like a step in the right direction. But some say a program that's supposed to stop kids from bullying may actually be suppressing conservative ideas on things like gay marriage and abortion, amounting to bullying of kids who are conservative on those issues. Joining us now for a fair and balanced discussion and probably debate, Fox News contributor and radio show host David Webb and Mark Levine, radio show host and former House Judiciary Committee attorney. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Shannon. Good afternoon, Shannon. All right, I'm going to start with Mark. He's here in the studio equipped with his uh, pocket constitution. Of because, of course, we bring in the First Amendment I here. I carry it everywhere. Um, you know, I think about this new study out of the University of Texas. The researcher said he was really surprised because what he thought was these anti-bullying show, you know, programs would show that they've actually helped. He says he thinks they've actually hurt the conversation. You What's know, I read you? the study, and he may be right about those particular videos he's talking about, but that can't change the fact that this is a very severe problem. It's not just happening in Polk County, Florida. It's actually suicide is the second leading cause of death among teenage girls, the third leading cause of death among teenage boys. It's a very serious thing that teachers and parents have to deal with. Maybe some particular way of dealing with it is not the best way, but teachers and parents have to instill this, uh, this code of behavior, really, for kids when they're young. Otherwise, they grow up to be abusers themselves. All right, David. Uh, one administrator who read uh, this study and was responding to it said that, you know, it used to be on the playground when kids in kindergarten, you know, somebody called someone a name or something like that. It was a teachable moment, but he says he worries now that it has to be documented, reviewed, resolved by everyone. They have to go before an anti-bullying specialist, a principal, a superintendent, the Board of Education, and the little kid could end up getting kicked out of school. Well, what we have here are two things, Shannon. One, children absorb everything that's thrown in front of them, good or bad, especially at a younger age. So we have to be careful of trying to legislate behavior rather than deal with children as children, whether it's parents or teachers. Bullying's not new, and extreme cases are not new, and they're tragic, and they shouldn't happen in either case. But trying to get bullies to change their mind until they evolve, grow up, or are confronted or challenged is nothing new in our society. That's usually when the dynamic changes. When it comes to the, the broader context of trying to write these broad laws, it doesn't work. Again, you can't legislate behavior, and trying to use it to suppress anybody's right to speak is something that should not happen. The problem we have here is we're trying to take this as if we can make people behave the way we want them to, rather than deal with societal issues as they happen. We can be preventative, but let's not get into the point of limiting First Amendment rights, limiting, pe limiting people's right to speech, and frankly, parents and teachers, teach your kids how to deal with situations. Stop looking for a law to teach your children something. Yeah, and I mean, Mark, maybe that's a good point. This is the kind of thing that needs to be taught at home, and maybe it's not anymore. But we see in some of these cases in some of the schools that kids who uh, want to put on pro-life displays, people who are pro-Second Amendment, those kinds of things, um, things that are viewed as more conservative viewpoints, that, that in some cases the bullying stuff is being used against them so they can't speak their positions. We need to make a, a very clear distinction between attacking someone for who they are and attacking someone for their political views. Frankly, I go on the radio all the time. I spout all kinds of things. I expect people to call in and challenge me for my views. That's what makes America great. But when they start attacking me personally, and I'm an adult, I can handle it, but then I say to them, look, you know, attack my views, don't attack me personally. The same is true for school children. It's very important. If someone puts forward a, a view on abortion, pro-life, pro-choice, whatever, and you want to attack their views, you should attack their views. That's what free speech is all about. But don't attack them personally. And when things get really bad is when you start attacking people for who they are. When you start attacking the kid who's of a different race or religion, the kid who's gay, the, uh, attacking someone for a disability or something, that is, is where it crosses the line and becomes bullying, and it right. has to I, I be stopped. Problem, the problem Quick here, power, Shannon, David. I've got to disagree with Mark a little bit, is about suppression. All right? Suppression, regardless of the view, is what's going on. And if someone goes out, and I mean, some of the ridiculous cases, a kid draws a gun on a piece of paper or something that looks like it, or makes they it go out of after him. You, yeah, so the suppression is the issue. Forget the issue. There shouldn't be suppression. And the fact is, time after time, we see suppression of things that are typically more conservative aligned views. Well, you know what? If they want to be pro religious, let them have it. But, David, we should you, have you free would speech. Kids no, let me finish, other kids, Mark. We should you? have let free speech. Speech, we should have free speech, not suppression, because you don't agree with the speech. 
All right, we are out of time, so we got to leave it there. Mark, right. I see you chomping in the bit, and you do have your constitution <laughs> with you there. I do. David, he's got it right here with him. Uh, thank you both very much thank for the you, discussion. Shannon. Good we to appreciate see you, it. Shannon. You too.